there, listeners. Thanks again for tuning into Sin's Workshop. Hope you're having a great day. So today we're going to be talking about Into the Crooked Place by Alexandra Christel. Many of you may know this author because she did To Kill a Kingdom, which is to on my never-ending to-be-read pile. Um, I think we all know the pain of the never-ending to-be-read pile. Um, and I have to say, when I started reading this book, um, I wasn't 100% sure I was going to like it. Um, just because the opening itself, it does have a really good strong opening line. Uh, one of our characters saying she sells magic, but not really the legal kind of magic, right? But I think one of the things that bothered me is after such a good line, the pacing of the story does tend to slow down a lot. Um, and that's not really a bad thing. You know, we are getting introduced into the characters. We are getting introduced into the world. Or we are getting introduced into the dynamics of the characters. And there are um, four different characters that we are meeting. You know, there's Tavia, there's Saxony, and there's Wesley and Karam. These are four distinct characters. And that's another thing I did like from it. Sometimes authors, and I haven't really encountered this lately, thank goodness, but sometimes authors, when they do multiple protagonists, or they all tend to kind of be the same. It's like, oh, you're reading the same character. They just have one thing different. You know, they either sound the same, or their character traits are the same, or their attitude and their tone is the same. And here, Alexandra did a really good job with presenting four distinct characters. So that's something that I personally enjoyed a lot when it came to the storytelling. I do think in that respect, it was really well done. Um, but again, the opening for me, you know, those first few chapters were very, I don't want to say boring. Um, boring is definitely um, not the right word. The right word for me would be, it was just slow. You know, it was just kind of slow paced, despite there being some lot of, a lot of tension, you know, when Tavia um, and Saxony have that moment with the magic. Um, it is interesting. It opens a lot of questions. It sets the direction of the story. You know what is going to happen, kind of. You know that there's a mystery here that needs to be solved. And then you see the characters kind of band together. Now, these characters are a band that don't really like each other. Saxony and Karam, they do have a romantic... Um, dynamic and then you have Tavia and Wesley who used to be childhood friends and now that he has now that they've both grown up and he's kind of like her boss she sees a different side of him that she doesn't really like but she still loves him you know so they have their own kind of romance themselves one that they've never acted on but one they wish they could act on and one that keeps them united now for n no one really likes Wesley <laughs> and you understand why he's cocky he's obnoxious I mean he's an underboss you know you gotta you gotta think what does that mean to be an underboss well you know I guess he's kind of like Kaz almost from Six of Crows I'd have to s actually yeah he is a lot like Kaz you know you either love him or you hate him or you respect him and I, j I just thought of that at this moment. And I love cats, don't get me wrong. Um, but yeah, you get why they don't like Wesley. But he is trying to do kind of the right thing for selfish reasons. However, you really do get to see a lot of character growth for him as the story continues because he really does, at his core, love Tavia. He wants to protect her. He wants her to 
pay off her debt and get out of this wretched city that brings out the worst. I mean, honestly, the slogan is, um, the city makes monsters of us all. And he's not wrong. In order to rise through the ranks, you have to be crooked. You have to be vindictive. You have to be pretty much a villain. And he doesn't want that for her. And you understand that as the reader. And I think subconsciously Tavia understands that as well. But her dream wasn't to just leave. She wanted to take him with him. Because, you know, he was her friend. So I really did like seeing that character growth. And even though um, Saxony and Karam, they really don't like Wesley. Tavia is always standing by him, his side. It's just like, you guys need him. Can you like hold off trying to kill him for like five minutes? And I didn't really like Saxony, to be honest. I got where she was coming from, and I didn't really like her. She was just kind of a whiny little... I don't want to use the B word, but that's what she was. <laughs> um, especially at the end. Oh my God. At the end, I wanted to just beat the crap out of her. I was so mad at her. Um, but now I really need to read the second book and be like, oh, Saxony, you have to redeem yourself. Not just in my eyes, but in your friend's eyes. Because you, you did a bad thing. You did a wrong, bad thing. Um, because she's so adamant on trying to save her sister, find her sister. That she's, you know not really paying attention to who her sister really is. Um, and that's the part that really, really kind of bugged me. It's just like, wow, you're an idiot. <laughs> but, you know, I really did overall like the progression of the story. It was just, I want to say the first three chapters of the book were kind of really slow for me. Um, lots of world building, a lot of character building, but once Alexandra really did get into the rush of things, you know, the pacing and the story development, and, you know, we have our characters go on an adventure um, to try to find a way to pretty much save their city and save their home from a madman. That's when it really started to get really interesting. That's when I really started to enjoy the story a little bit more. Because... That, again, those opening three chapters, they were really slow for me. I wasn't sure if I was going to like the book. I was just like, I'm kind of... I, I was kind of bored. So I guess bored is the right word. I was kind of bored initially when I started reading it. Um, but, you know, that's how stories are. Sometimes they have slow beginnings, sometimes they have strong beginnings, and then they fall off the edge. And I think this is one of those really good slow build novels because it just keeps rising. You know, the tension keeps rising, the stakes keep rising, the plot development keeps rising. There are so many numerous plot twists and turns that keep you, the reader, engaged in the storytelling overall. And that's what I really took away from the story. That's what I really enjoyed from the story. And then when I got to that ending, oh my God, that ending, I couldn't put the book down. Um, so I guess that last quarter of the book, I was just like, need to read, need to read, need to read. And I couldn't put the book down. And then when it ended, I was like, no. Um, <laughs> I was like, I need the second book and I need it now. Um, that's really where I was at. <laughs> So, I mean, every book has its ups and downs. Well, no, the really, really good books don't have any, have very little downs, um, in my opinion. This is one of those where, oh, I'm so sorry, I just woke up. <laughs> this is one of those books where it starts kind of dull, in my opinion, but it just skyrockets up you know, it just keeps going up and up and up. There's really good character dynamic, really good character development, really good pacing, really good story development, lots of plot twists. It keeps on going up. So that's a sign, in my opinion, of a good reader. But they have a solid beginning, even if it is, you know, 
just a little bit dull, I guess. Um, but they're just like, okay, I'm going to spit out the dynamics and world building and structure really, really quickly so that you have an understanding of this world. That way I don't have to reference it again. And then I'm just going to go off with my story. And that's what I think Christo did on this. I think she, she did a really good job with that. And I'm glad because once the pacing, once they're on that train ride and all hell breaks loose, I'm like, all right, this is fun. This is entertaining. Let's see where this goes. Um, see, that's what I mean. It's memorable. There are lots of memorable scenes for the storytelling. Um, even the beginning, it wasn't, you know, as exciting as I anticipated it to be, but it is memorable. The book is memorable. And if a book is memorable to me for all the right reasons, then that's a good book in my, in my opinion. So I'm going to go ahead and give, uh, into the crooked place. I'm going to give it four out of five stars. Um, I think it, it, it really does. It makes me super excited to read the second book and it makes me super excited to go to the store, um, where I work <laughs> and buy more of her other books. You know, that's what I want to do now. Like I'm engaged. I'm excited. And I want to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and give it four to five stars. Remember, if you want to support the author, please purchase the book from your local bookseller or online book retailer. If money's tight, check out the book from your local library. And on that note, I hope you all continue to support me here by liking this podcast, subscribing to it, and sharing it with all your book-loving friends. Have a great rest of your day, and as always, happy reading.